Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be covering how to back up files from your Windows computer to your Synology NAS utilizing CloudStation Backup. Alright, so to kick things off head over to Synology.com uh, and open their download center. The easiest way is just to scroll to the bottom of their page and under the support column at their footer you'll see the download center. Go ahead and uh, click on the uh, find your Synology product button uh, and you can either scroll through and find your uh, NAS uh, model or you can just type the uh, model number and it'll go ahead and start filtering the results and then you can click on your uh, Synology NAS device. Alright, after doing that, stay in the utilities tab and you watch, what you're wanting to download is going to be the CloudStation backup. Just go ahead and click that executable file and go ahead and download and install that file. I've installed the CloudStation backup software that we had just previously downloaded and it is now ready to connect to our Synology NAS. Before we actually connect though, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the console for the Synology uh, just to make sure that a couple things are ready to go and then we'll jump back and connect to the uh, CloudStation server. So the first thing, of course, after going to the console is to open the package center and just to make sure that the CloudStation server is installed and running. If you do not have this uh, package installed, I do have a dedicated video talking about the CloudStation uh, server. Uh, so go ahead and watch that in case you have any questions. Uh, and then after it is running, we're ready to proceed. I am going to go ahead and head over to the control panel. And what I'm going to do is make a dedicated folder uh, for PC backups just to keep things nice and clean and organized. So I'm just going to call it PC backups. And then I'm just going to make sure I give my user access to it, of course. And just finalize, finalize the uh, creation process. After we have a folder dedicated to PC backups, you don't have to do that, but that's just how I do it, just to keep everything all organized. I'm going to go ahead and go back uh, and click on the CloudStation server uh, under our application list. The only thing we need to do here is just to give uh, the CloudStation server access to the new folder we just created for PC backups or whatever folder that you're actually going to be using. I'm going to turn off version control and then enable the backups. So we now have access to the PC backup folder from the CloudStation server, and we're now ready to go back to our desktop and connect our desktop software to our Synology NAS. All right, now back to our Windows desktop, we're ready to click the Start Now button, and we're ready to enter our Quick, quick, quick Connect ID and the username and password for the Synology user that you want to uh, back up the data under. So go ahead and enter that data, then we'll join back up here in a second. After entering the credentials on the previous screen and clicking next, your software will automatically test the connection to your Synology NAS. And then after ensuring that everything is working correctly, we'll progress to the screen that we're seeing now. At this point in time, you should be able to see all the hard drives you have connected to your, your computer. I only have a single large capacity SSD, so I only see one. But if you did have multiple, you should be able to see all of those drives. At this point in time, you can now drill down into that folder and start choosing folders that you want to back up. So for instance, if I wanted to back up the Autodesk folder, I can select that and the check mark is going to indicate that all, all files and folders within that Autodesk folder are going to be backed up. If any new files are created underneath that Autodesk folder, those will also be backed up too in the future. I'm going to go ahead and deselect that and go down to a more complete example uh, to walk through any questions you might have. So you can see the user's folder has a dash. A dash is just going to indicate that the user's folder itself is not being backed up, but that there is a folder somewhere inside of the user's folder that is being backed up. So drilling down on the user's folder, we see that the same actually applies to Zach. So the Zach folder is not going to be backed up in entirety, so then all the contents of Zach won't be backed up, but there are going to be subfolders inside of Zach somewhere that are going to be backed up. Drilling down once more, we now see that I have a handful of folders that I am choosing to back up. So you can see that I have my desktop, my documents, and my downloads chosen uh, as uh, backups. I don't have a great use case for this personally because I already store all my data on my Synology NAS. Uh, but if you did have certain files and folders you wanted to back up on your computer to your NAS, you would now choose those at this point in time. So after you have all the folders and uh, that you want to 
back up to your Synology, you're now going to need to choose your backup destination. So this is going to be the folder on your uh, Synology that you're going to want to back up to. At this point in time, uh, you can see your computer name that will be automatically populated from your Windows device. If it has a random name and you've never changed that and you want to just give this something so you actually know which computer is being backed up, uh, such as Zach's laptop or something like that, uh, you can now change that here so that you can actually easily find which file or which, which uh, s s folder that the files for that computer are actually located under. I'm now going to choose the PC backups folder uh, that I created earlier just to keep things organized and click OK. You can now see that inside of PC backups is automatically going to create a folder called uh, that has your computer name or whatever you've changed that to on that previous screen. Clicking on the backup rules real quick, you do have uh, a couple of different options in how you control how backups are being created. You can give a maximum file size. A zero indicates that there is not a, a maximum file size, so it essentially is unlimited, as you can see there by uh, hovering over it. Uh, you can also have certain folders that will not be backed up, so like temporary files and things like that. Uh, and you can also add extensions uh, if you wanted to at this point in time now, so you can just have it uh, not de do uh, exes. To ha essentially have a blanket, what you need to do is add the asterisk .exe, so every ex executable file would not be backed up if I added that to the list. As you can see there, here, that is exactly what they have done. They have the asterisk to indicate that every dot, uh, .swp will not be uh, backed up. So since I don't have any changes from the default, uh, I can't apply, but if you did, you would now be able to apply those changes. At this point in time, all you have to do is click the next button and you can just get a kind of review of everything that uh, we have just set up. So you can see that the server you're backing up to, this is gonna be the name of your Synology NAS. Uh, you can see the account, which is gonna be your Synology account that you're backing up under. Uh, you can see the PC, the path, and this is the path on your Synology NAS device where all folders will be stored under. And you can see all the backup sources. So you can see that these are the backup sources that I have selected, and this is everything that is gonna be backed up to my Synology. Clicking done will proceed with uh, everything. You can set your target as read only so other computers cannot modify it. But since I have a dedicated folder for PC backups, I don't really need that. And since I'm not gonna actually access the PC backups uh, folder from my computer, it's not something that you really need. But if you are in a shared environment, you might want to consider doing that. Uh, clicking okay, it'll once again test the connection again, and it'll go ahead and uh, uh, open up into the program proper. At this point in time, you can make modifications to uh, your backups. You can add new folders if you wanted to down the road. Uh, you can change your backup rules and you can also review your connection details. At this point in time, we have now essentially completed the installation process. However, I do have a couple quick tips to help you enhance your experience with the CloudStation backup software. The first of which is the Recent Activities tab. If you have a particularly important file that you wanted to make sure it has been backed up, uh, this is a great way to just go through here and check to make sure it is in the Recent Activities. It might take a little while for the service to recognize uh, that the file has been saved and uh, to actually back it up, but you can double check here just to make sure that it has been backed up. In addition, if you're backing up to a remote Synology where you don't have as great uh, data throughput uh, that you would with a local Synology, uh, this is a good way to kind of gauge the pro process or the progress of the backup, especially if you're backing up uh, large files such as video files that you have been editing. Beyond that, I do want to talk about one setting in the settings tab, and that is under the backup rules. Uh, you'll see by default, there's a checkbox under don't remove files in the remote backup folder when they are, are removed from the source. So what this is saying is when you delete a file or folder from your Windows computer, it will not be deleted from your Synology backup. This is actually great because if you accidentally delete a file from your Windows computer and don't catch it before you empty your recycle bin, you can still go to your Synology and restore that file if you still needed it. However, if you are backing up a folder that is constantly having files added to it and deleted to, from it as you don't need them, uh, such as the downloads folder, then it means you could potentially have a lot of data on your Synology that you don't really need. So I just wanted to point this out because you might need to go to your Synology and purge from time to time, but it is a great checkbox to keep checked just to help uh, allow you to have an extra point to restore from if you do accidentally delete a file. 
The final point I wanted to talk about is heavy hard disk usage while backing up and using your computer at the same time. Since every time you edit a file that is uh, in a folder that's being backed up, uh, every time that edited file is saved, it'll be backed up instantly to your Synology device. And I use instantly somewhat loosely. It might take a couple minutes for it to be backed up, but it'll be constantly being backed up. Because if you're editing a file throughout the day and saving every 10 minutes, every 10 minutes that file is gonna be backed up to your Synology device, which might cause extra heavy uh, usage of your hard drive. A quick workaround to uh, remedy this is to pause your backup process while you're actually using your computer and then resume it at the end, end of the day when you're done. However, there is a big drawback to this simply because you, uh, it does require you to remember to hit the resume button. And if you do forget that, it could be days or possibly even weeks before you catch that and you could be missing out on backing up important documents. And if something did happen to your computer, you could potentially lose those documents. There is a better method that actually involves stopping and starting the service on your Synology NAS device itself. Uh, but that is a little bit more complicated and elaborate and it'll take a little bit more time to walk through and with the goal of keeping this video as short and concise as possible i want to break that off into its own separate video which i'll be posting in the near future all right that's pretty much it for today's video guys if you found this video informative as well as helpful give it a big like i greatly appreciate that also if you're not already an existing subscriber smash that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon at the same time to stay tuned for more great videos from thought-provoking tech Thanks for watching guys and until next time, Zach out.